Hello, good morning and welcome back to the Fish Locker. Today I'm up in Minehead. I'm joined by a couple of friends. Uh, Chris, you can just see in the background there, he was in the Thresher Shark video and we've got Grant and Adam are just down parking the car. They're going to be joining me at the NEC Boat Life event later on. I can, I'll put a link in the description of this video, but we'll probably chat about that. And we're fishing with Mikey Webber on his boat, Teddy Boy. You see, he's just about to come pick us up. The clarity today in the Bristol Channel is <laughs> probably about three inches. We have got half a tackle shop, stacks of bait. The plan is we're going to do some mixed fishing at anchor. Just for anything and everything we can find. When it gets alongside, we'll get loaded up and we'll get going. All the way up along that coast, yeah. That's uh, next steps for me. Rigging up to the first mark. When we get there, I'll talk you more through when there's not the sound of the engine. What have you got in your tackle box? Ah. First mark that Mikey's brought us to. Yeah. We're fishing on an area of clean and pebbly mud sand for everything. Mixed ground, so there's going to be a chance of rays, conger eels, huss, spur dogs. Adam's into the first fish over there. We have a couple of rods fishing up tide. We'll talk about those in a second. We just wanted to get everything set up first before we started talking. And we've got a couple of rods here that are fishing down tide. You can see the current running past. Yeah, it feels like that's what it feels like, something just holding. We'll come back to you. One of the things that you've got to fight against here with the amount of tide is a thing like it's caught a ray at the minute. All it's done is it's just laid itself out in the tide so it's got the full force of the tide against it. Yeah. It'll kite, kite left to right and it's just yeah. skating about it. Done. So is it thornback? Is it? It's a stunning thornback, yeah. Yeah. A female, and you can see why it's called a thornback, can't you? Yeah. They are almost prehistoric, aren't they? In the look. Look at the eyes on it as well. Almost like really deep green. And just flip her onto it. Just turn around, mate. Yeah. You can see that it also has a few thorns on its belly. Oh yeah, yeah. This is. Be careful, though, because. Although it is just crushing pads, they can extend the mouth a little tiny bit. And if they go under your finger, you know about you it. You know about it, mate. <laughs> right, how do I put it back? Just chuck Just drop it back on the side, mate. Yeah. Side. yeah. Right, so we can find a bigger one. There we go. Wicked. Well done. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ooh, uh, what are we looking at? Might be. So the rig that you caught the ray on there was just, it was fished down tide, wasn't it, Grant? It was down tide, yeah. And you've got, I don't know what you're fishing, is it a 10 or an 8? 10 ounce lead. So all he's got is he's just got a sliding ledger running up your leader. And then what have you got, 3 foot of? Yeah, about about 3 foot, 80 pound mono. Not too, not quite a supple mono for the rays. And just on to um, a small but. It, that is a small look, isn't it? Yep, yeah, 3 -o. Um, We're saying at a small a shank hook, you've still got a good gape and a good gauge. Yeah. Good gape, good gauge on it, very strong hook. It was absolutely pinned as well, wasn't it? And you're just using a yeah. launch, frozen launch? Frozen, yeah, frozen launch, just chop the head off, get the blood flowing out of it, chop the tail off, same thing. Little tag there above the hook just for helping, um, yeah, wind elastic against to hold it in place. I saw that when you were unhooking it and I was thinking yeah. how to cut that tag end off and I thought actually yeah, you'd be <laughs> using it as a bait stop. Yeah, use it as a bait stop. Wind it really tight, keep it straight in the tide. Brilliant. Yeah. Just a very simple sliding ledger, straight into your link, and you've got, you've bound that, you don't need to worry about binding them. That a little bit of elastic's not going to bother them the slightest, is it? 
No, no, if you've got them soft enough, you can thread the line down through. Uh, these have just come out of the pack frozen, so you can't really thread it at the moment, but yeah, later on we'll just thread it through. A little bit of elastic just to stop it slipping down the hook at the bottom and do the job. Brilliant, thank you. That is the type of bite you're looking for. Rod nearly leaving. Can I just hand that to you, please, mate? That was a proper bite. You saw that, didn't you? There, it was just. It was a, because I'm fishing down tide, the line's tight to the tight to the lead, tight to the bait, tight to the fish. So as soon as the fish picked it up. I'd be surprised if this is anything but a dogfish. Because of the pull of the tide, just like you yeah, you just take your time bringing it to the bottom. Yeah. We've got a strap. Strap on it. Strap conger there. They lose that black tinge to their to their fins at a certain point, don't they? Like you'll only ever see that black line on yeah. small ones. It's quite cool that. And that rig there just exactly the same. It's just sliding lead. And a clip of a hook length. Mine's about two and a half to three feet, and I'm fishing with a four row with some fresh mackerel. I'll show you how I bait up now. Right, when I was rigging up, I made up a few spare hook lengths just so that I can be pre baiting a few of them so that when I bring one in, clip it straight on, cast it out. Now, I brought these up from Cornwall, these are a special conch now, they're just fresh mackerel. And all I'm going to do is just take the side off one. Now I like cutting them diagonally. Like that. Reason being is because I like like a long thin strip bait, just because I like it to kind of flap around in the tide. So that will make two baits. The sinews are all in the tail end, so the hooks go through there first. You'll see how tough that is there. Just put it in and twist it over and then back through maybe once or twice. Slide that up to the knot and then I'm just going to use a little bit of bait elastic just to lash around the top and this is just going to anchor the bait onto the shank of the hook. There, that's it. That gives me a proud hook point and the bait's going to be sat in the tide now with a little bit of movement, plenty of scent coming out. That's just going to sit out in the tide like that, waiting for a ray or a huss or, a, or a anything. And the next one, I'll just use that to bait my second one. Chris is just taking a second to knock a couple of baits up as well. You've been fishing upside, haven't you? Yeah. Just the same, what you're using there, is that a 5 or a 6 or? Uh, 6 or. With 80 pound hook, it doesn't really matter what size I think it's strong enough so it doesn't get bitten off. If you hook something toothy up there, and then a section of bluey, it's going to wrap that into the hook. Oh, so you've just you've cut your bluey into a section yeah. and then halved it? Yeah, halved it and then halved it again. Brilliant. I took the head and tail off, don't really need that. Put this on. You've been using cocktail baits, haven't you? Yeah, because it's quite a big hook. And get away putting the squid on this side, just trap a bit of scent in there because it get washed out pretty quick. I just put that through there. Back round and I'll whip, whip that on that. Try find the other Cover that in there. Squid's good like that for wrapping up a softer bait, isn't it? Yeah. Because if there is going to be any little fish there or any little crabs. It's more just try and trap the scent in. Yeah. I'm good at 6 though, still got a good, good bit of hook there. How many teas, how many coffees? Coffee please mate. There you go. There you go. Nice little compact bait, hook points proud. Great, thank you.
Yeah. Like that's actually yeah. taking line. Oh, yeah. So whereas the little eel before like, just that, kind of came to me. Yeah. When they're doing this, like you did with your rate, yeah. there's no point trying to like, chug a wall with them. Because I like to fight it off. Go. Oh. Yeah, that was a that was a rare big rate. Decent one, was it? Yeah. The all there is just you have to when it wants to fight away, you'll have to kind of let it go and then once it stops you, then you'll bring it back. Yeah. That, uh, yeah, but that I didn't that even have a chance to set the hook there, I just yeah. picked it up and it was gone. It was gone, yeah. Get it next time. <laughs> Anybody who makes videos, you know, <laughs> you know yourself that the amount of footage that you cut away because you've been waiting for a bite like that for like five minutes and you come to that. Indeed. That's why I like the lure fishing because at least the bite's a bite. With rays, they can sometimes give you a false bite as they land on the bait. Right. Because obviously you've seen where the mouth is, yep. they'll land on it like a predator. Right. Yeah. And then position it underneath, get their mouth hit. So the first one you say might be finding just a bit. Pinning it, yeah. So if you try and strike on that, the best thing you might hope for is that you'll follow look at its side. Right. And you'll leave it until it gets the bait and Yeah. That's what it felt like the fish that come off before it felt like a bait. Is it still having a go at it or? It's still sat there every now and again there's a little bit of a nod. Leave it to develop. Leave it a little bit longer. There we go. Don't worry, I'll just get all the small ones out of the way for you all. <laughs> Walking back. All good? See the tea barrel off there. Yep. Taking up the slack line. When you get there, set the hook. different as well fishing mono. Chris has got mono on there and there's a lot more stretch in mono than braid. So you'll wind right down and then you'll set into it and you'll feel it be a little bit more springy. Oh, there we go. You're either coming up me or... No, I'm not on you. Uh, might be somewhat playing with this one then. This one now. Yeah, you are. You're on me. What is it? Could that for a second. Everybody here. Great, great enough, mate. I must have just been over here. Yeah, Coddling. Just gonna say there's, there's no no pressure now or anything, yeah. That is a nice one. Yeah. Just open it <laughs> opens its mouth. See so look, he's just very gradually walking it back, taking his time with it. You can see that when it comes up, opens its mouth, it fills full of tide. Well done. Nice, that is a belter of a codling. That is a cracker. Good size of cob on it as well. Well done, mate. The pig. Hey. 
He'll have seen that from sure. <laughs> Yeah, like lovely, lovely fish there. Other side, mate. There you go. Good. Got him. Yeah. Oh, he's a stunning codling. Don't let him come away from that side. <laughs> go straight back up its side. Yeah. You got a stunning condition fish. Set up, you just had that codling on, yeah, mate? Yeah, so right, squid and bluey, well, I just had that on. 6 0, that's uh, 80 pound just to a swivel. No, I've got a swivel on there, but I mean, you can use a quick link or anything. Bead um, and a zip slider. I don't use a bolt rig for my up tidying. I always sort of find gets more things just tangled around, um, so I just use running ledger. Um, rod and reel just to fathom. Um, I think that's 60 pound leader. Spider hitched onto that, and the only reason I use spider hitch is because these are my shore reels and a bit lazy. And you're mono all the way, are you? Yes, yeah, so that's mono all the way. I think that's twenty pound. I mean, really, you probably do twenty five, but just like with that cod, just play it really, um, really steady. Don't horse them. In. And you're you're casting so that you've not got a long hook length and a bait flapping round you. Hook that on my uh, gripper. And so then when it's it's just going to literally yeah just pop straight off yeah. like that. That's it. That's it pretty much. I use a thummy because I find when my hands get covered in squid and everything, the last thing you need is a uh, your reel sliding when you're casting out. But yeah, that's it. When you're casting, he's going to cast over the boat. So make sure if you are casting or if someone else is casting around, just be safe. Then let that hit the bottom. Um, I mean, the tide is dropping off a bit now, but I'd probably let that out for I don't know, 10 seconds, something like that. Count it down, let that gripper um, dig in. Your lead's hit, and you've let a belly of line come out down there so that you, your lead has enough time to bed into the sand before the tide picks it. And then you're going to fish, you're not fishing like straight to the rod tip, like the down tide rods, you've got a belly of line out of yeah. there. So my line's down there, but my lead's actually over here. Um, and make sure you take your drag. You definitely don't <laughs> need your rods going overboard. Flick her on. There you go. Brilliant. Thank you. You know how fishermen are really superstitious? I can't help but think there's some type of jinx on me. <laughs> what are we on about? Don't come out now. Bananas. Healthy as well. Bananas. He's only just put his banana down and got a bite straight away. Numbers aren't that great. No. Found it. Okay. Missed it. That'll be that banana. Got <laughs> you dead. Cleared out a little bit now, one thing you can see a little bit more of the, the wonderful scenery of Minehead. The tide's dropped off a bit from what it was when we first got here. We're using 12 ounce leads, we've now dropped down to eight. We're in about, about 40 feet of water. But the water, I still can't get used to the colour. Like that cod, you had that cod right up beside the boat, it was only maybe a foot below the water, and you still couldn't see it. You're going for a big bit there. Yeah, didn't think so. No nice. Yeah. Chunky cod bait now. Just a small hook just to hold it in position at the bottom. A nice big 7 0 hook at the bottom. We've got two, two unwashed squid, or is it just one? Just one. one it's a decent size one. A few blacks up against it. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's a decent size, lads. Good luck. The tide has dropped away to so almost nothing here. We'll move to a different mark and see if we can't find a bit more tide. Yeah. 
see what we were saying earlier about once you get it on the surface, yeah. you can get it. It's actually easier to skate across on one of these reels than it is on that fixed spool. Nicely done. Same again. Yep. Male thorn back. Tell it's a male by then. See what I mean about the extending mouth where you want to watch your fingers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a lot of Marine plastic. Yeah. Mm. A lot paler than the last one, isn't it? Brilliant. It's the same, um, it's the same type of ray, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Thorn back ray. Love it. Yeah. See this type of this type of fishing at this time of year, a lot of the fishing is this. Sat, <laughs> sat talking about all the big fish that we've caught in the past that we want to catch in the future whilst watching most of us rod tips. Yeah, trying to stay out the wind. Yeah, trying to stay out the wind and the rain. And see, we have got. It is a bit confusing, isn't it? Because we've got tide running that way and we've got the wind coming across. It's sat well, if we'd been in my boat right now, would have been. We're in all other spot. How, how deep are we in now? We're going about 30 foot of water still. You see there how with the uptide is, it's bent over with the belly of line. This is obviously them lucky bananas. Yeah, the uptider rods have really nailed it so far. Boats managed to swing round now, we've gone past low tide, so the boats swung round and we've got wind and tide together. Chris has managed to find himself a little strap. This is exactly the same. Did you see like a proper bite on there or did you see a, a drop back? So you no, saw it. It was a proper bite, yeah, yeah. Slightly better fish there. Slightly better, wasn't it? Nicely done, mate. Oh, there's a bite. Bound to show up sooner or later, weren't they? Yeah. We've been saying it all day. Well, hopefully this is a sign at least the fish are coming on the face. Yeah, you're right, as soon as the tide started flowing. The weather's taken a little bit of a turn. You see it's got an awful lot darker. The tide's just picking up now. The uptiders are just nailing it, we're getting probably two or three bites to every one that we're getting from the downtiders. What have you had so far? You had um, 
two thornback races. Two thornbacks, yeah, yeah. It's Adam, been, been great. Sorry, I'll, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry to um, Adam's also going to be at the Boat Life show at the NEC later on the year, and Grant is going to be one of the media partners through Hook Point Magazine. Now, you're going to be, it's, it's the first year of the angling section of the boat show, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. So, um, first year for the angling event, um, but obviously Boat Life's been around for two years, this is the second year of the show. Um, the Suzuki Marine Power Angling Zone um, is a really interesting thing, I think, for the angling industry. You know, bringing boating and fishing together, bringing some ambassadors together, there's going to be some really interesting boats, big brands, Warrior, Suzuki, Marine Power, the Wolf Rock are bringing boats, um, but obviously loads of different people from the angling world, so people come and ask some questions and uh, hopefully have some fun. Well, there's a few things that are going on, like the talks from the Shark Hub. Yes, yeah, yeah. Like people from the angle, just, I'm, I'm interested in getting stuck in. Also, I was thinking this, uh, Isuzu over there, are they doing a... Yes, so, they're so Isuzu and uh, SBS Trailers are doing a kind of um, trailer test drive track they're talking about. It's so going to be time trials. Yeah, yeah, maybe we can have a race. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, I'm going to see it. I might have to get the lamps on in a minute because it is starting to get a little dark. It is dark, isn't it? But yeah, the main thing the main thing that I'm excited about with the boat life is it's just going to be a bunch of anglers and people who enjoy boats talking about everything they enjoy doing in a laid back atmosphere where it's hopefully a little bit warmer than today. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> we knew it was coming, didn't we? Dogfish. What have we got? A codling? A little codling! Oh, I thought you were going to knock it off on the railing then. Oh, well done. I'll tell you what, it's a... Yeah, again, it's missing bottom of its tail like we were saying earlier on. Yeah, is it fresh, is it? No, oh, pretty fresh. Someone's had a... Someone's fancied a bit of cod for its tail, hasn't it? Nicely done on the uptider again, mate. We're just looking there, discussing at what we thought maybe taking bottom of its tail off. It's full of crap. Absolutely full in it. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Just gonna say the telltale thing, obviously, to show you part of the cod family is this little bib here. Rock it, mate. Brilliant. Well there we go, we have come to the end. We have fished it until, well, as you can see. The best fish throughout the day was definitely Chris's cod. In, in fact, the uptiders and the rigs that Chris was using outfished everything else that we had on the boat. We were just fishing in exactly the same areas and yet he caught three times as many fish. So the proof is in the pudding there. Hopefully we will do some more trips with... Is that a light going on there? <laughs> Hopefully we'll do some more trips with Mikey on Teddy Boy. Grant, Adam and I will all be at the NEC in Birmingham for the Boat Life event that's between the 16th and 19th of February. I'll put more information in the description of the video for that. Also there will be a discount code if you want to buy your tickets. I hope you enjoyed joining us, I hope you found it interesting. All the very best, see you later.